Okay, so hello. Um, making this video uh, to demonstrate how to make concentrated hydrogen peroxide starting from the diluted stuff that you get from like Walgreens or Publix, e.g. that. Uh, yep, 3%. You can buy like a one quart, one liter bottle uh, from those guys. Uh, but if you want concentrated stuff for whatever reason, especially doing the famous demonstration elephant toothpaste, which is really fun, and which I'm doing for my church, for the kids' ministry. It's going to be great. Um, anyway, if you want that, you have to do this. There's a lot of methods I've like read about and seen videos on that don't work. One of the method methods is freezing the peroxide and separating out the liquid that isn't frozen yet, and that really does not work. In fact, I found that I got a little bit more dilute hydrogen peroxide solution by my calculation, which I'll show you soon. Um, so what really works, and the only thing I've found to work, is evaporation of the solvent, which is water. Um, and so this is how I do it. You take uh, your liter of the, the stuff in the bottle. <clears throat> I heat up my hot plate to 220 degrees Celsius, but what is more important, and which you will be able to facilitate probably more easily, is the temperature of the actual solution. So I've got it uh, up at like 73 Celsius. Anywhere between 60 and 80 or even 90 is pretty good. You can do even lower temperatures than that uh, and still evaporate up the water, especially if you have a fan. Like uh, this little guy, it's a 24 volt CPU fan. Um, so you can do it as long as the water is evaporating. It might just take longer if you have a lower temperature. But the benefit of lower temperature is that it decomposes the hydrogen peroxide less. Uh, in any case, so if you start with a liter like this, uh, and you let it evaporate down to say 100 milliliters or less, maybe like 50 milliliters, as in the case of this example that I actually did, 946 of the original bottle, 946, right there, to uh, 41 final, that came out to 36 percent, which is even better than that percentage I showed first. Um, so that's the method uh, you just evaporate off the water. So the way to calculate the concentration of the peroxide after you're done making it, and essentially the way to calculate uh, concentration of any unknown peroxide, hydrogen peroxide solution, is this. This took some effort, but that is it. So this is an equation that will give you concentration of peroxide uh, at a given density. Density is the only uh, independent variable here and you need to report it in grams per milliliter to do this calculation. So the way that I did that, if you're wondering, is a standard calibration plot using known densities um, at the same temperature. Same temperature is important because density will change with temperature. So I did 20 degrees Celsius as a standard. Looked it up on uh, Wikipedia. This is the concentration of 30% peroxide, 1.135 grams per milliliter or cubic centimeter. Uh, and then pure peroxide, and then I had a standard of water, which is 0% hydrogen peroxide. And uh, a couple other standards that I did myself from the 3% stuff, so that was the density I got from 3 and half dilution as well. So just to get some more uh, realism, I guess you could say, in the calibration, I added my own points, which are right there. So I put the, uh, the equation into the Linux version of Excel, but you can do it in Excel. Uh, and got the function here. Really good correlation, r squared close to one, and that's the function. If you just do a little bit of algebra on that function, you can solve for x, which is the concentration of peroxide. So once again, <coughs> equation for concentration of hydrogen peroxide looks like that at 20 degrees Celsius. If you have like room temperature, like 25 or 23, or here in Florida, like 28 and 29, because it's ridiculously hot right now, um, it would vary, so you need to keep it isothermic. You can just use a little ice bath to cool it down, or you heat it up if you need to to get the same uh, the same temperature. And then what I do is just use like a grad cylinder, weigh the mass, add the peroxide solution, weigh the mass again, get the difference in mass, and there you go. You got the mass and the volume because you can just read it on the grad cylinder, the volume, and then uh, you got density grams per milliliter. So that is how you get the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide after you make it. So I've made a few solutions. This guy uh, I froze and separated out. I froze it at negative 18 Celsius, which is pretty typical for a freezer. 
uh, and it was still 3% or even less for some other trials. Um, and then this guy got to 22% going from the full bottle, 946 milliliters, to like 110 milliliters. So you can imagine if you uh, do less, if you get it down to less volume, it'll be even more concentrated, which I have done, got it to like 36 uh, or even more. <clears throat> the way I validated this method, besides obviously the data from Wikipedia that's been standardized from other folks, is um, this. So here I've got 35% food grade hydrogen peroxide bought from these nice folks at Pure Health Discounts. Um, it's legit stuff. It'll turn your skin white for like anywhere between two hours and like a long time. So um, you don't want to mess with this stuff. It's kind of expensive. So yeah, but anyways, I did the same density calculation on this and uh, it turned out that I calculated 31% and they report 35 so it's pretty close you can imagine reasons why it would be different but um, that is about it oh uh, subscribe comment and like and all that jazz please it'd be nice it'd be cool especially if you want to see more videos like this it would be encouraging for me to keep doing them if people uh, appreciate them because I know I would have appreciated seeing this a long time ago because it took me a while to really get this down to a science. All right.